Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it. Hope you're doing well, staying safe, taking care of yourselves, all those kind of things. And if you're new here, I'm Jim. Great to meet you. Thanks for stopping by. I make tutorial videos here every week showing you how I edit my photos using various software products. Today I'm in Illuminar AI and I'm going to walk through a quick edit showing you the power and the flexibility of using just the Essentials tab, which is the first tab in Illuminar AI, showing you and kind of demonstrating how easy it is to use the product and how much of an impact you can quickly and easily have on your photo. Let's get going. Okay, here's my base image. Now, the only thing, two things I've done is I used Composition AI to straighten the photo and slightly crop it. And I used the erase tool because I had so many spots. It was, it looked like my photo had chicken pox. It had spots everywhere. This is uh, something I took years ago in Dublin, which is a beautiful little town. Um, I love to visit. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get started here. So for me, this was a actually a beautiful sunset. And this was back when I used to shoot brackets like incessantly. So this was one exposure from a set of a uh, seven exposure bracket. Uh, anyway, this one, uh, a little bit dark in the foreground, you know, a little bit too bright in the sky. I want to balance it out. I want to bring the colors back. And of course, I want to pop that sunset. Let's get started on it. First thing I want to do is warm up the temperature. So I'm going to go like 81 something, something about like that. And I'm going to take a tint to about 11. I tend to do that a lot with temperatures because especially at sunset, I just like that little bit of that magenta tint in a sunset. I just think it looks good. Smart contrast. I'm going to give that a little bump and highlights. I'm going to pull down quite a bit. So something like negative 72, 73 and shadows are going up by about 25 to give me a little bit more visibility into that foreground. Speaking of visibility into the foreground, that's where Enhance AI comes in. Accent AI is, as I said before, just one of the greatest tools in any product anywhere. I absolutely adore this thing. It does a great job of lightening the photo. Keep in mind, it's also popping colors. It feels like it adds a little bit of contrast, things like that. So do be careful. There are images where I've used it at 100 and get away with it, but I don't necessarily recommend that all the time. Uh, in this case, I'm going to add Sky Enhancer as well of about a 20. And just these two changes, if you take a look at the before, there you go. And then after, you can see it's really popped the image quite a bit. But there's a few things I want to do. The next thing is Structure AI. And this is something I do a lot, which is I want to reduce the structure in the sky and the water. Whenever I have pictures like this that have a lot of water and sky, I like to smooth them out. It's personal preference. I'm going to go of a, about negative 50 or so. And I'm going to take the brush. Um, so let me close that and show you. When you open Structure AI, it'll look like this. Then you can click on this little icon that looks like the top of a spray paint can, and that will allow you to paint a mask. So what I'm going to do is I'm just actually going to get the erase, and I'm going to erase that negative structure from the buildings, simply because it's a smaller amount of real estate than trying to paint it into the sky and water. So I'm just going to come through here and do this and try to talk to you while I do it. And there we go. I have completed my mask. You can hit the forward slash key to show the mask on the photo. So there it is shown and there it is hidden. Basically, as you can see, that negative structure has been applied to the sky and the water and the buildings have not been impacted. So now I'm going to move on to color. I want to give this a little bit of vibrance. I'm going to give that like a 22, 23. But there's a couple of things that are bugging me. The green here on this building is way too electric. So I'm going to go into the green here and I'm going to pull that saturation down quite a bit. So like a negative 60 or so. That looks a little bit better to me. By the way, if you open the color tool, there's an HSL down here. And you can choose hue, saturation, or luminance. Hue is the shade of the color. Saturation, of course, is the intensity, and luminance is the brightness value. I chose saturation because I'm going to bring down the intensity of that color. And then I'm also going to bring down the blue a little bit, maybe like a negative 15. I don't want to overdo the blue. It was just past sunset, as you can see, but um, there's a lot of blue in it, and I'm, I don't want to overdo the blue. It was also, like if you saturate the blues, you start to get these kind of crazy HDR looking photos like that, and I don't want to do that. I want to tame that a little bit, so negative 15 seems to work quite fine for me. And then my last move is just down here on the landscape filter or tool. It's got three wonderful sliders in it, dehaze, golden hour, and foliage enhancer. I'm just going to use golden hour, and I'm going to go to the mid-60s, something about like that. And what that does, in fact, I'm going to go to about 70. What that does is it basically is popping the warmer tones and really kind of infusing that warm golden look across the photo, especially where the golden tones already somewhat exist. So if I turn that off, you can see in the brighter parts of the photo where some of the golden tones are, there it is. And after, it's just, 
to me, it's a very natural look, even at 70, which is very high. It's a very natural look to the photo and how the golden hour is kind of uh, displayed across the photo. And that's really it, my friends. I mean, if I turn this on before, you can see some of the spots. There's a ton in that upper right corner, quite a few on the left um, and after. Simple and easy. And if I do this sliding uh, little window here, you can see I've really been able to pop the color and do a lot of great things to the photo without getting into complicated edits or time-consuming edits. It's really just staying on the Essentials tab and taking advantage of the power of these various tools. Light does a lot for you. Enhance AI is amazing. Structure helps, of course, color and golden hour. And, you know, this is just simple, straightforward, but mostly just quick. And sometimes it's fun just to have a quick edit other, of course, than all the erasing I had to do. And in fact, I think I might come back and erase this little bit of a tree because of the way I've straightened the photo, the tree itself is not showing over here on the right, but it is showing down here. I'll probably clean that up. In fact, I actually might crop the photo further. In fact, that's just what I'm gonna do while we're at it. I'm just gonna go ahead and crop the photo a little bit further. I think that would be better. And I think that looks good. I think it's straight, maybe a tiny bit more straight. There you go. And hit enter and I'm all set. That's my photo, my friends. That's how it worked. I appreciate you watching. Thanks much. Luminar AI is coming December 15th, as you have probably seen. So if you haven't pre-ordered yet, you can get it at the link below. You're going to have it in your hot little hands real soon. I hope you have a lot of fun with it. I'll be back with more tutorials. Thanks for watching, my friends. You guys take care of yourselves and adios.